everybody they was like what's yours miss basil who do you admire who you admire and i was like well i admire me they was like oh selfish much <laughs> one girl said that i had to correct that okay what's up basil bays it's your girl joy back with another bingo well today's monday I am so behind on all of my vlogs and I know this camera is crooked, but it is what it is. So, this is the beginning of my third week and I gotta put grades in. I just need to stay here till like midnight, like twice this week, so I can get my grades in. But in the process of still getting to know the students and um doing all the basic stuff so i think we're done with the get to know you blah 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 now we're starting to get into the meat of lessons and so on and so forth but we are still easing them in i've been teaching them how to write um prompts how to respond to them saying that we need a hook line what's gonna make somebody want to read your essay you have to hook them in so we've been working on that so we did that a couple times i've modeled it several times so now today was the first day i'm like let's see let's see what you made up some kids are still struggling many of them got it so today was the first day where i gave a little pop quiz but it was easy it was easy i don't like to surprise kids with quizzes and stuff i, I don't like doing it that's just me personally i don't enjoy it i like to prepare the kids and so they know what's to come so this one what's it do now when you come in you have a writing assignment or a revise and edit assignment and these are things that you're going to need for the state test so i'm just think we have a year you know school year so easing them in so by the time that test comes around they should know all the skills all the things that the state is looking for like a hook line your intro examples so i'm starting off with little things that will write in a complete sentence uh, where's your hook line where's your intro sentence where are your examples to support your point of view basic things that you're gonna need in everything that you write and some of my balls are not going so well i don't know some of them i think they were a defect in the ball so i'm gonna blow this ball up anyway I'm here, I'm tired, I'm tired. I think I'm working on about three hours of sleep. All my videos are old, child. I don't know when I'm get. it's like I keep falling asleep. By the time I make it to bed and with my computer and blah, 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 it's like 11, 12 at night. I'm tired and my alarm clock goes off at 4.30. I'm just tired. So, I just wish I had two of me. Ooh, if I had two of me, ooh, we would be like fire, honey. We would be, ooh, everything, child. Two of me, could you imagine? Oh my Lord. Anyway, quiet so I can get to this <laughs> story because my daughter, she begged me. She says, Mom, can you leave right after school, please? So, I just wanted to do this little video real quick because I was touched. So, the prompt, the writing prompt today was, who do you admire the most? Who has made an impact on your life? Um, write a minimum of five sentences. I'm not asking for much. Write a minimum of five sentences. You can add more. I'm looking for that hook line. I'm looking for your intro sentence. And I'm looking for examples and complete sentences. Simple. You know, I'm not checking for spelling and all that stuff. That's not what this not what this paper I'm grading on because we've been going over hook lines. Uh, we've been going over giving examples. So these are things we've been going over. So I want to see. So one little girl. Everybody wrote great things. Most of the kids wrote about their parents. I was like, your parent needs to hear this. I mean, it was good stuff. The sacrifices that they've made, how they believe in the kids, blah, blah, blah. And I think I had one student. I haven't read all the papers. She wanted me to read her. She read hers in front of the class. And... I thought it was so sweet. Of course it was about me. Now a lot of them did not write about me. <laughs> but I thought this one was so sweet. And I wanted to share it with you guys. <laughs> she wrote. My role model. Once more I leave the. So this is her hook line. She's leading you into her paper. Once more I leave the classroom with knowledge. And a positive attitude. These feelings don't typically come up. When you leave a classroom. Usually you would feel frustrated. And a bit dumb. Miss Basil, my seventh grade English teacher, has changed that for me. Somehow, she found the perfect balance of entertainment and positivity and work. 
and discipline. So, for example, comma, she can keep her class under control considering the fact that she has given them the unusual seating. She makes her classroom feel like a home rather than a classroom. And you can obviously see all the effort she has put into making us feel comfortable. This teacher is revolutionary. Thank you, Miss Basil. Isn't that sweet? Revolutionary? Seventh grade. It's just so sweet. I mean, positivity. I mean, discipline. I mean, I mean, what can you say? I leave the classroom with knowledge and a positive attitude. That's how she open up. You just want to lead your reader into. I'm like, oh, what is this girl talking about? I'm, I want to read more. You want the reader to want to read your piece of work. And she did a good job opening the scene and setting the stage for her paragraph. I mean, she gave an example, um, she gave a hook line, she gave her intro, Miss Basil, my seventh grade English teacher, has changed that for me. And then at the end of class, she came up to me, she waited for everyone to leave. She said, Miss Basil, I heard some people saying that I was kissing up to you, but I'm really not. She says, before you came, she says, I really didn't like teach you. She said, there was another teacher I really, really liked, and she made me feel important, and she didn't make me feel bad, and I was in second grade. And she says, I really do appreciate you and everything, because this is the first time in a very long time that I feel good in a classroom. That really made my day. And I would say for today, every day there's a little gift that I feel like, oh, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> um, I find little gifts that I appreciate. And I think today, I don't know, could be other gifts out there for me. I think this paragraph or her story of someone she admires and someone she appreciates I think hearing that from her I think that was my gift today I say every day is a little gift you know something that's different something that's like my aha moment something that that's like wow that was awesome and this was awesome I think that was the gift that I was waiting for today and I needed that I think every day is a gift it's like I don't know what's gonna happen this was, I feel like, I feel like this was my gift today. I just love it. And I will say, she was the only, I haven't read through them, but she was the, this the only one that someone wrote about me. And you know, I just got here, so I was hoping that there was someone else, <laughs> you know, that they admire or, you know, that they look up to or whatever. And then I said, who I admire the most. Then I gave mine, and I didn't want to say mine in the beginning because they would have felt as though they could do what I do. I was like, no, you guys haven't lived life enough <laughs> to write the way or to say what I'm going to say. So when it was all said and done, everybody, they was like, what's yours, Miss Basil? Who do you admire? Who do you admire? And I was like, well, this is not for you to get sad at all. At all. And I was like, you know, I admire me. They was like, ugh, selfish much? <laughs> One girl said that. I had to correct that, okay? And I was like, yeah, I had to overcome a lot in my life. I'm the last surviving member in my family. My mother's gone, my father's gone, my sister's gone, my brother's gone. The things that I had to deal with and overcome inside my household, I looked at my family as who I did not want to become. The first one to graduate high school, the first one to graduate college. I'm a survivor of domestic violence. Um, I was almost killed. I've kind of been homeless. I've sat on the library steps, not knowing where I was gonna go with my kids. There are days I didn't know how I was gonna feed my kids. I've been to the food bank, the food shelter. I've lost some homes, lost some cars, been broke, had to get on welfare, get some food stamps. And you know, throughout 
all of that. My first name is Joy. I live my life with joy every day. Yeah, of course I get sad, but I would never come in the classroom and take my problems from the outside and bring them to the classroom because it's not fair to you. And I said, I'm not looking for anyone to be sad for me. Look at it as my determination, my perseverance, my will to survive, my will to never give up and to be able to tell my story to so many people and be that guiding light for people that when things get tough and things get rough, let me be that guiding light that this too shall pass. You will get over it. You have to keep the faith. You don't give up, you keep fighting. And when somebody tells you you can't do something, you prove them wrong because if you want something bad enough, you go out there and get it. I remember when I was in a relationship, they didn't want me on the internet. You know what I did? I scooped my, my three little babies up we went to the mcdonald's they played in a little play area and i got on a free internet there let me tell you if there's something that you a goal or something you want to accomplish you don't let nobody get in your way for accomplishing your things you gotta do what you gotta do boo some things you're not gonna like what you gotta do but you gotta do what you gotta do so, to survive and that's what i did so Therefore, that's why I told the kids I admire me because no matter what, I'm not going to give up. I'll get knocked down. Several seats I'll be knocked down. But baby, sister knows how to get back up. Toss the wig on, put put the makeup on. I don't got to look like I'm busted. Uh-uh. Who got to look like they busted? Not me. I'm still going to do me, boo. Mm-mm. I'm still going to be cute. Yes, I said. You may not think I'm cute, but I think I'm cute. You know, I clean up pretty well. <laughs> I don't be waking up cute, though. But I clean up well. Shoot. Uh-uh. Life goes on, honey. Mm-mm. I'm going to keep fighting, and that's why I told them. And then after I finished my little spiel, they started clapping and stuff. I was like, yeah. Now you understand why I admire me? Because, mm-mm, a sister going to keep fighting. And am I still fighting and struggling stuff yep and i said and i got receipts i said one of my friends on facebook i said i took a picture just to show you i got my receipts. i've been knocked down plenty of times and she's from brooklyn and i said this is what she said she was like word for word yo your bounce back skill is impeccable probably the brooklyn in you because we go hard you make breaking up and moving on look good <laughs> you know so you know, I, I'll break down, honey, but I'm never going to look broke down. That's what I'm never going to do. I mean, it's life. Life's going to hit you hard. You just got to get back up. Got to get back up.